I'm going to hide my plane so you guys can see a little better. And I'm going to take that modify curve and I'm going to do a move to it. Bring it straight down on the Z. Negative 6. Keeping the original. And I'm going to do the same thing and bring it down negative 3 keeping the original. I also want to scale it up by 1.2. Perfect. So now I have these three curves, 1, 2, and 3, that I'm going to loft with normal interpolation. I'm going to make it 18 karat yellow gold. I just like modeling in yellow gold. It's just easier for the contrast to see what you're doing. Okay, normal and validate. Now if you notice too, all of my starting points are right here at the top and that's because of that modify curve that I did. And that'll be important as I said in a little later. Next up I'm going to show off uh, another special effects tool that I'm going to go over more in depth in special effects too. But we've touched on it in past video demonstrations so uh, I'm going to use it here and do the shell with a thickness of one millimeter. leaves us with this. Now I'm going to try a little trick and see if it works. I'm going to bring back the loft as a reference object and I'm going to subtract the shell from the loft. Great. So that worked. I, I, I'll do that one more time so make sure you guys follow. I have my shell. Okay, here's my shell. I'm going to bring back the loft as a reference object and I'm going to subtract, boolean subtract, the shell from the loft. And what that achieves is now I have the perfect inside of that shell. So I'm going to bring back the shell as a reference object. And you see, if I freeze this, it's the perfect inside. And I'm going to use that later. I'll rename it inner cutter and I'll rename this base pendant body okay so I have what will become our pendant and I am going to make a new sketch this time on the front view plane just like that and I'll rename that one front view and I'm going to use my cyclical curve and draw a six or seven point kind of hourglass shape and I'm going to move it into place just eyeball it doesn't have to be exact I'm going to move it down so it's like right in the middle there and then just reshape it to the basic shape that I'm looking for. And again, I, I will be able to uh, adjust this later. But something like this should get me close to where I want to be. Next thing I'm going to do is leave the sketch and make an extrusion from both sides. We'll do, I don't know, three millimeters should work of that curve. Now I'm going to take the solid I just cut and the move rotate scale from the middle and do a tool called graduated duplication. I would actually like to rename this tool as a uh, duplicate on a curve because you don't have to graduate it. You can but you don't have to. So when I select that you see I get uh, a repeating pattern along that curve. I want to change it from fixed space to fixed duplication number and I want to change it to use position origin to centers on curve. Just like that. Now this is why the starting point was important. Had the starting point been over here then the first block would have been put here and they would have been duplicated like so and it wouldn't have been symmetrical. But because the starting point is here you see this one stays put and the rest are positioned around it. 
I actually think 10 is a good number and I'm going to validate that and save and now I'm going to show you one of the uses of boolean intersection. I'm going to choose the graduated duplication and choose the body and do a boolean intersection. Okay, so it didn't fail, but um, I want to go back and show you the way that it's better to do this. So right now, this is a graduated duplication. If I was to filter this, I can grab out all of these individual pieces. They are not Boolean together. So prior to bool doing the Boolean intersection, you should Boolean add these together. And if I was to have had a, a failure there, it would have been for this reason. Anyway, now I have the solid Boolean um, cutters and the body, and I'm going to do a Boolean intersection. And you see it leaves me with this shape, which is pretty close to what I want. But if you notice here, too, we have some problems here, um, and the reason for that is the extrusion didn't come quite far out enough. So I'll change that to four millimeters and that should give us exactly what we need. And perfect. So now you see we have the really smooth uh, walls and we know that the exact thickness from our shell. Now I want to change the shape of that uh, a little bit. I want it to be a little bit more hourglassy. Like, can do. Can actually delete some of these, like this. Recompute. See how that comes out. Not what I'm looking for. Spring it out like so. Recompute. So it's nice because I set it up this way. I can really start playing with it and change the shape of these cutters based on the way this curve is set up. Great, so um, that's the Boolean intersection. I'm going to save there and I'm going to exit the sketch. And now I'm going to hide everything, show my Boolean. I'm going to rename this pendant body and add some fillets. Now remember with fillet, I can check on the curve I want to fill it, or I can hit the surface and it grabs all of the edges. And in this case, that's definitely what I want to do. Change it to 0.4 millimeter, and this should round out the entire body of the uh, pendant. Nice, that looks great. I'm gonna add in a chamfer on this, I believe this is the top edge, add a chamfer here. Let's see if we do a chamfer, we'll do 0.5, see how that goes. Nice, cuts us a great little seat for the stone, like that. And on the bottom edge, we'll add one more fillet, rounding it out, 0.3 as well. Nice, so we'll save that. And go back back to the top view and I'm going to make a circle turn on my grid snaps make sure that circles in the exact center um, I'm going to give it a radius of one and offset it reverse direction 1.5 validate there and I'm going to move both of these into position in the sketch like so and bring it down here like so Great. Now I'm going to do an extrusion of those two. We'll do one millimeter from both sides. I got something I didn't want in there, so go like this. Perfect. 
perfect. I'm going to do some filleting on this edge and on the, that edge. We'll go 0.5, see how that looks. Can do it even a little bigger probably. Go 0.8, see how that looks. Nice, and I'm making my bale. So if you notice, inside it's overlap, it's coming inside of the um, the body. Now that cutter I made before, the inner cutter, it's the perfect volume to trim that by. So I'll do a Boolean subtraction, and I did it in the wrong direction. So I'll double click back on it and change the order. And now I get that. So when I show my body, it comes and fits perfectly and cleanly on the inside. I have this circle now. I'm going to take the body and I'm going to crop it. And this will cut out this little chunk right here so I know that this is exactly the distance I want it to be. There we go. The next thing I'm going to do is add some prongs. And the way I'll do that is I'll make a new plane. And I'll have it be like this. Well, I want it to kind of pass right here. And I'll make it, uh, I don't know, 25 by 25 and call it the prong plane. Look at it from the side to see the orientation. I'm going to make that 90, 180, no 270. 270 is good. And then throw a sketch onto that plane. From there, I will take a NURB, go one, two, three, four. I want four points for uh, rendering purposes so I can bend my prong. And then I'm going to make a cross section one millimeter and move that just over like that, keeping the original, and then trim out the middle. One, two, auto connect. Now, uh, you guys all know that I like to use Sweeping Wizard for my prongs, so I'll go to Sweeping Wizard hit the section, hit the hand, grab the cross section, change that to middle, and I'll just add another section in case I need it later and validate. Nice. Now, I actually want this to come over just to touch that way. This is the beauty about doing it on its own plane. And when I recompute, I get this. And under the sweeping wizard, I'm going to move this NURB out. I'm going to move this NURB out like this and like that. Recompute. like so. I'm going to actually turn my grid snaps off so I can position this perfectly. And here's a cool trick. I want to go planar, you know, so on the compass, the to be planar view to this plane, I can't get there on the compass. So I hit the plane and then I hit this and it turns me planar. Go like so. Maybe even a touch more. And that looks uh, pretty close to where I want to be. I'm going to save. And I'm going to multi-bulge out the bottom of this prong. Nice. Now I can take the Prong, mirror it across. 
mirror it below. And I get my prongs. Now, as I said, um, just to show you for rendering purposes, if I wanted to render this, I would do something like so. And multi bulge the top as well. And when I recompute, all right, cool. So now I have the body, the prongs, the mirror, and the mirror of the top two prongs, as well as the bail. I'm going to take all of those and I'm going to do a Boolean addition. Doesn't matter the order in which I select. And I'll rename it Pendant Body. I'll just do a quick part doctor on it. And we have a true solid. So we've taken a real good look at Boolean, addition, subtraction, intersection, crop, and punch. And we've constructed the beginnings of what could turn out to be a really nice pendant. I'm going to wrap this one up for now, and uh, maybe we'll get back to this design in another video demonstration series. So get up on the forum and ask all of your questions and uh, you know comments, post your work. We want to see them. As always, I'm Joshua St. John, 3DesignNYC on the forum. And until next time, go make some beautiful stuff.